Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm making a Conqueror's Blade video about how to make artillery and go over all the details of each type of artillery. So if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that sub button. I greatly appreciate it. And let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into how to make artillery, where to make it, and some of the best practices in doing so. So in whatever city you're in, you're gonna hit your tab map and you're gonna go ahead and take a look at where the gunsmith is. The gunsmith is who you make artillery with. Um, there is also the siege engineer. That's a little bit different. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So go ahead and go over to your gunsmith smith right here. Uh, interact with them and then you can see all the different types of artillery you can make in this city so i actually don't want to make any uncommon artillery i like to make rare and epic artillery so let's figure out where we can do that um so really quick on the map uh i know for a fact that let's say mortars for example blue mortars i want to make those so i know at riverside i can make them you can click on the thief and you can see what type of artillery you can make in them uh, so this is a trade city. So this hasn't changed in a long time. Like you've been able to make mortars here for like, many seasons. Also, you can make culverins down in Boster Varro, and then you can make Scorpios in Western Frontier. So, uh, and it's the same in other uh, regions also. So you just, you know, look around. All right, so we wanna make blue mortars. So what are the things we need for making these blue mortars? So I'm gonna throw this up really quick. <clears throat> so. As you can see, you're going to need 100 cast iron, 100 improved copper, and then you need 50 plain wood, and then you're going to need cut stone. So let's go ahead and make those things, and then let's head over to Riverside. So to make them, you need to go to the refinery overseer. This is where you make materials. All right, so we will need, uh, we're going to need rare. There's three different types of materials. There's uncommon, there's rare, and there's epic. So we want to make rare materials because we need cast iron, right? So I already have the cast iron that I need. I'm going to make six mortars when I go over to Riverside. So I already have 600 and then I already have 600 improved copper. The only thing I still need is plain wood. So I'm going to go ahead and make 300 because it's 50 for each, right? So to make six, a uh, quick math. So I like to use my rare resources. Um, I don't really have any uncommon resources. I don't really gather them because I like to gather blue and higher, obviously blue and purple because you get exotics from them. It's very slim to none that you get any from your uncommon resources. All right, so really quick for the resources and exotics, uh, obviously you know where to get the resources. It, it shows you which ones are which, but for exotics, you don't really have a clue. So I am gonna drop a guide, check my description. Yeah, look down there in the description. There's gonna be a guide that tells you all the recipes for all the artillery. So make sure to take, just at least look at it copy it whatever get a screenshot of it so you can use it in the future for when you want to make any type of artillery so now let's get back on track and um, now that we have everything we need let's go put it in our wagon and let's head out all right now that we're leaving the city let's make sure we get everything we need to make the mortars so um we we know we need 600 cast iron we need 600 improved copper and then 300 plain wood um one more thing we still need to get is uh let's go ahead and pull up materials here we need the cut stone so we're gonna need 300 cut stone also right there we go all right, now that we have everything, um, also I highly recommend bringing some type of defensive units because you never know, someone might hit you. Hopefully you can beat them and keep all your resources and materials. So let's head out. All right, guys, now that we're out in open world, let's pull up our map again. Uh, we wanna go to Riverside, so you can click on it and you can hit the go to, and it'll just make an instant auto path. Um, another thing I wanna mention is uh, Riverside's not gonna be the only place you can make mortars. Uh, you can make them at player-owned thieves, like uh, I know Haviz is one that you can make mortars, but you gotta make sure that it's the correct level. So level four, you can't make mortars because they got to be level five. You need a level five thief in order to make these. So you can't even make them yet. So you need to wait until um, maybe your allies or if you own it, you'd have to get the thief to level five. So luckily, Riverside and Bastavaro and Western Frontier are all level six thieves. So you can go there and make these mortars, Scorpios, Culverins with no issues. So I would highly recommend focusing on that because if you look at these AI cities, they actually have zero percent tax. Zero percent tax, guys. 
So that is great. Like you're not, it's not costing you extra to make them there. So mwah, beautiful. So let's head over. All right, guys, now that we're at Riverside, let's go ahead and run over to the gunsmith and start making our mortars. So go ahead and build artillery. Well-made mortars. Yes, please. So I want to make six of these bad boys. So it's going to cost me 3K silver. Make sure to keep an eye on your silver because it will start, you know, diminishing your silver count. So go ahead and start crafting it. Um, it does take a little bit. It's going to take three minutes. So obviously it's about 30 seconds per. So you're going to have to wait there. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up because that's the magic of editing. I want some well-made mortars, baby. Making those mortars for me. Um, I was, this was this was supposed to just be sped through all the way. I don't I don't know what happened. Whoa! All right, guys. So we made all our mortars we made all six um it's telling me insufficient space on my wagon oh my what to do so let's go ahead and deal with that so it, usually you can only carry five but you know i like to make six to ten usually all right so when you have insufficient space you can go ahead and look at your inventory and it's going to show you right here that you have you have six mortars right here sitting in your um, resource piles so let's go ahead and um figure out how to get these so I can hit get items, um, not enough space. Okay, so let's go to our wagon and actually move over however many we can. So five, right? We can move five over. So we still have one here. Okay, that's unfortunate, but there is a trick to this. So what you can do is head back. So let's head back to Torovoros and then I will show you magic. So people might want to field you just because I see you have a bunch of artillery. So maybe changing lines is a good idea. I'm ballsy. I don't care. I'm going to stay on line one. You know, if you're brave like me, go for it. Um, I'm always happy to fight. So that's something to consider. But let's keep heading back to Toro Varos. All right. Now that you're inside wherever your camp is, for me, it's Toro Varos. You're going to go ahead and go to the watchman. And we're going to go get those mortars or whatever culverins, whatever artillery you had to leave behind because you didn't have enough space in your way. So you can go ahead and jump into um, the watchman menu and go to transport goods. Oh, there goes the well-made mortar I couldn't bring with me. So I could click on it and ask them to transport it here for 300 silver. I'm like, eh. That's worth it in my opinion. Imagine if you had like 10 or 15. Like this is a great thing that Conqueror's Blade's given us. It gives us a, an opportunity to just transfer everything to our camp instead of having to go back and forth, back and forth with getting all the different artillery that you just made. So go ahead and hit that transport and boom. Now you don't have any resources in the open world. You can just hit get and then send to camp. Boom magic so that is the trick on how to make artillery all right guys so i'm gonna start breaking down the different types of artillery and what they're good at uh like their pros and cons so let's go ahead and start talking about mortars uh these are actually one of my favorite types of artillery so i'm gonna jump into this so mortars are mostly used for you know helping clear units and heroes from like the front side of uh, gates. Like if you're trying to push through a gate or corridor um, and there's a ton of troops on the other side, you could use a mortar to shoot over and into the units and heroes. And there's probably artillery there too. So they can do a lot of that. The placement mortars should definitely be like behind a fence. Uh, it, should, it could be behind a rock. Anything that helps prevent like culverins from shooting down at them because when you're attacking, obviously you have a disadvantage in height. So use the fences and any type of building uh, structure that you can block yourself from getting hit from culverins. So that's like the biggest con with mortars is like they can easily get shot with culverins if they're in the open. So hide them, hide them well. So once you've done that, you want to just start aiming for like the other side of the wall and hitting units, heroes, and whatever else is there. 
So that is the main reason for mortars. And they are using TWs a lot because, you know, big walls in sieges. Uh, what goes over those walls? Mortars. Damage from mortars has been nerfed a bit in season six. So I, you know, down the road, hopefully they bring back some of that damage. But right now, their damage is not great. I mean, you will eventually kill all the units on the other side, but it takes a lot more shots. I'd also look into focusing blue mortars over purple just cost wise. This doesn't make sense to make them anymore. Another thing to consider about mortars is that they're really good at stopping cav charges also. They have a pretty decent radius for shooting. So definitely look at them for that advantage also. So just another note to add here. So let's jump to the next one. All right, guys, let's talk about cannons and what are some of their pros and cons. So some of the pros with cannons is they have a straight shot, right? Um, some of the cons about that is they have a, quite a lot of a dip off. Like their, their shots drop very quickly because the cannonball is heavy, right? So it drops pretty quick. So you have to aim a little higher than where your target is, which, okay, got it. You'll get used to that over time. Some of the more of the pros with that is that their radius damage is actually pretty decent. Uh, radius damage does also hurt your friendly allies, so keep that in mind when you're shooting. Uh, you want to usually be shooting into a group of enemy uh, heroes and units. Uh, usually when they're all coming through like a gateway or corridor, you're just blasting them with a cannon. Uh, usually they're pretty much the best because of the radius. Uh, Culverins would be good if they had a, a bigger radius of damage, uh, and also certain culverins only hit so many targets. But with a cannon, you can hit a huge amount of units with one shot. So definitely something you want to use for clogging up uh, central points of entry. And also, like when they're on the point, you know, blasting them with cannons is a really good thing too. Also, using cannons to break doors, breaking walls are really good. Also, I'd actually recommend those over culverin based off their damage uh so with season six um whenever you watch this video season six there was a lot of nerfs to artillery so with cannons the damage actually didn't change for well made but the optimal cannons got nerfed to nothing <laughs> they are still a little bit better than the well made rare cannons but the optimum cannons they, so the difference is like you went from six you have 6k damage on your well-made cannon and then you have 6.6k damage on your uh, optimal cannon and the issue with that is that's not much of a difference so why make optimum cannons again focus on rare cannons do not focus on optimal cannons if if you want to waste those extra resources go for it if you have them, go for it, but I don't think they're worth it. So I'm going to put that out there. Uh, if you do see changes to the damage on Optimo Cannons, maybe they'll be worth it again. So keep that in mind. Uh, so besides that, cannons are really good up on walls also. Like you can use them to shoot down onto groups of units. And that's like their main use. They're pretty well rounded. Pretty well rounded because of their straight shot and their radius blast. That is their strong suits. Cons, obviously, the drop off with their shots. You can only shoot straight. Uh, you can't really shoot over walls with it. Uh, I mean, with the drop, with that drop on the you know, cannonballs, it actually does let you kind of arc over walls a little bit, but it's kind of hard to do. Um, but I I, uh, I think that's like most I can say about cannons. That's, that's their general purpose. All right, guys, let's go ahead and talk about culverins. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite artilleries to use, and they're used a lot in Territory Wars, so keep that in mind. So some of the pros with culverins is they have a very straight shot um, that you can rely on. They has a little bit of a divergence left and right, but barely any. So culverins actually are really good at taking out siege towers, taking out battering ramps, taking out artillery. They're actually probably one of the best at taking artillery or the best. They have a very straight shot, so it's a lot easier for them to aim and target specific things. They actually can kill heroes with headshots very easily. Uh, definitely one of my favorites. Uh, the way you want to use these usually on a wall, um, shooting down and taking out artillery and siege engine. So it's like most I can say about Coverins. Uh, with the season six nerf, they haven't really gotten anything 
They, they didn't really get nerfed too much, except for their divergence left and right horizontally. And then I think their ammo was changed a bit. So enjoy your culverins. They're still great. Keep rocking them. I recommend using purple and rare still. All right, let's jump into talking about grape shots. Um, I usually don't use grape shots that often. They are a very specific type of artillery, but let's talk about them. So grape shots are great at killing heroes in units up close and personal. So when they're pushing around a corner or they're coming through a gate, you can have grape shots on the two sides waiting for them and just blast them as they come through the door. Like that combined with the cannon shooting into the doorway, they're not really gonna have a chance. Also, grape shots ignore blocks. So it doesn't matter if a long sword's in there with the shield up, you can shoot through it. So don't be shy, blast away. Uh, they did add a little bit to them on season six, uh, buffs and nerfs. They actually gave them a, a few more uh, shards to shoot. Um, so now they actually do a little bit more damage for the rare. The purples are still really great too. The blue, the greens are eh. <laughs> they're not that great they can't really kill heroes too well unless it's like a dual blade or a short bow maybe a light armor they can definitely kill uh, but medium to heavy armor they have a really hard time killing but if you have a blue uh, a well-made grape shot or optimal grape shot they will do some damage they do have to be about 10 meters away they, they don't have a lot of range because it's you know it's a grape shot right so it sprays so you want to try to get them with as many of those pieces as possible. So the closer, the better, but it does ignore blocks. So it is something good to know. Like if you know they're going to be pushing with a lot of shields, maybe place a grape shot and then start blasting them. You know, you never know if you have two grape shots taking out all the shields, you didn't have to bring iron reapers. You know, you didn't have to waste any units on it. Uh, maybe you just have shields in front of you so they can't get to your grape shots right away. So that's, that's what I think about Grape Shots. Um, love to get some of your commentary on that because I don't use them that often, but I did want to cover them. So let's go to the next one. All right, guys, we are on Ballistas now, and these are actually one of my favorite types of artillery. You know, very straight shooting arrow that actually does a ton of damage. So what are the pros of Ballistas? They have a very accurate shot, little divergence left and right, not much. It has a... Find a bit of a drop off, depending on where you're shooting it from, but it does shoot pretty straight for a fairly long time. Uh, I would say it's up there with Culverin. The things that is really good at is killing heroes and killing high tiered units. So I like to use my ballistas for killing heroes and then going after T5s. Usually Cav. If I see Cav running around, I'll snipe him with the ballista. It just helps. You know, you can get two to three of them per shot. I'm mattering on the type of ballista. Each ballista can shoot through a certain amount of units and heroes. So keep that in mind. Like the siege ballista, I think, is unlimited. It just shoots through everything. <laughs> Which is a legendary uh, artillery, right? So, of course, you know, something crazy. Uh, there weren't that many nerfs or anything to them during the Season 6 nerfs on artillery. They're still very, really good. They did uh, bring down the damage on the Optimum Ballista, just like 2k or so, like 1.5k. Uh, did not change the damage on the Ballista or the Well-Made Ballista. <clears throat> uh, the ammo was shortened quite a lot, so you don't have as much ammo. The reload time not changed much, just a little bit on the Well-Made Ballista. So with that said, like I, I just think they're one of the best artilleries in the game for the fact that they kill heroes. Like, if you take a hero out, you're taking their units out of the game too, you know? Because units are almost useless now because they retreat in 10 seconds with the new Season 6 updates. So, I feel like uh, killing heroes is probably one of the most important things in the game. And this is one of the best artilleries to kill heroes. So, you gotta have some good accuracy though. I would highly recommend just going out there practicing most siege maps in uh, siege battle matchmaking has ballista so just get out there and practice people love playing them so hopefully you can get your hands on them and that is all i got for ballistas all right guys let's talk about scorpios uh, a lot of people don't think scorpios are that great and i'm actually gonna have to agree with them <laughs> they're not that great they're actually designed to kill archers um, and they have some cc capabilities but mostly to kill archers uh, they've recently got nerfed I don't understand this. They got nerfed in season six. Damage across the board got nerfed. I was just confused on this. And they had their ammo decrease. 
It already wasn't that great of artillery and they just nerfed it a bit more, so I don't see people using them much. I mean, if you're aiming for archers, yeah, definitely use Scorpios, see how that works for you. Or if you're just trying to CC uh, people on a point, you know, go for it. Um, but I don't recommend using this artillery. Uh, it's fun to use, but it's not really effective. It, it's effective at taking out range units, but range units can ease easily move around and it's hard to keep hitting the same spots or where they're moving to with how far away you have to shoot it so scorpios are my do not make list but uh they are fun to play with some so that's all i got to say about them let's go all right guys let's talk about who watches and what they're good and bad at so watches pretty much shoot straight forward in various you know divergencies left and right um they drop off pretty quick but they do a lot of damage very quickly if you can land the shots um all the shots can do tons of damage so if you're you can land a bunch of shots on a hero you can get like an instant kill matter in it like what quality the watch is obviously normal watches don't do too much damage but uh, well made and optimal watches are actually pretty badass they can uh, definitely take out a whole bunch of units that don't have shields. Uh, they can also take out uh, heroes if they run up front. Um, they do a lot of damage. Um, the problem with them, the con is the accuracy. The accuracy is so hard to deal with. It's just like these bouncing arrows back and forth. So you kind of got to wave it back and forth. Um, but yeah, that is like the main thing Hawatches are good for. You can put it on a point and just shoot the enemies that are coming at you or you know put it around a point and just or a tunnel or any type of gateway and just shoot down it kind of like a cannon it has the same general idea but uh, it doesn't have a radius blast it's just going to hit one target and try to kill a target at a time instead of doing a bunch of damage to m multiple targets at once so that's that's the main difference there um that's all i got for who watches one of my other favorite types of uh, artillery would have to be war rockets. War rockets have this ability to actually shoot over things and then come down with these multiple rockets. It's actually pretty good at, you know, stopping cav. It's good at attacking things from a distance without being seen. Uh, it kind of has a mortar feel, but doesn't have as much of an arc. It has a bit of an arc, but not as much, and they can shoot pretty far. So that's something pretty awesome about them. Um, the cons, the reload time is eh, but uh, the damage could, I feel like it could be better. Uh, with the season six nerfs and buffs, uh, it looks like they actually uh, decreased the, the health by a bit, and then the blunt damage was reduced a little bit also, So and also the ammo. So unfortunately, they're not gonna be as good as they used to be. But they are still a fun type of artillery to play with. You can only get them from artillery chests. Alright, let's bring up Flaming Comments really quick. They're pretty much who watches with rockets. Their damage is not that great. But they're not that horrible. But you can only get them from artillery chests. So, I mean, when you get them, you can use them. But I would recommend using who watches over them. And that's all I really have to say about them. <laughs> All right, guys, really quick, let's go over the Siege Engineer and what he's all about. I mentioned earlier that I would go to him and would figure out what he does. So he actually is in charge of exchanging artillery components. He's actually pretty popular. Um, so artillery shop, you can go here and buy artillery with silver. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just go make your own. Don't. Don't. He's he's robbing you. Don't Don't let him take your money. All right, so go in here. What you really want to use him for is the exchange artillery component. So in here, you can see you can exchange for legendary, epic, rare, and uncommon. So once you have five, I think I have some I can show really quick. So right in here, I have five of these. I have some of these. I have some of everything except for... Oh, I almost have enough for legendary. So now we're going to go into here. And now you can see that they're white instead of red, right? So now you can exchange... These components so the way you get components is in siege battles and TWs when you kill player placed artillery you have a high chance of getting it almost a hundred percent maybe it's like 90% chance uh, you don't always get it but pretty much most of the time you get it so you can go ahead here and hit exchange uh, I have one yeah I can do one so exchange and then you get this chest right here you get an artillery chest sweet and then you have uh, rare, I think I can do three. I don't know how many I have. 
two it looks like two so we can do two here so this is what uh, another way to get artillery so i wanted to make sure you guys saw this i didn't want to skip over this so you can then open up these chests oh you can't sell it okay so now you can open it and then you get a random artillery when you open it so boom and then you have a uh, grape shot let's see what we get for epic Ooh, optimal cannon gabouche but all good so let's go ahead and move on to the outro of this video <laughs> all right guys we're finally almost done with this video i did not have any footage for catapults so i apologize for that but they are good at killing siege engines i'll put that out there and then i'm going to show you a little bit of what the great bombard can do here at the end of the video so much love to all of you i also want to give a shout out to afterlife and acquired cheese for helping me test thank you guys so much and i hope to see you guys next time make sure to hit that sub button if you like this video catch you later